Today on It's the Economy, the discussion is obvious. What will Reserve Bank do to the incremental CRR of 10%? Remember, on August 10th, Reserve Bank imposed this additional 10% CRR on all deposits that banks collected between May 19 and July 28. The RBI's argument was this was to mop up the extra liquidity created by the return of the 2000 rupee notes. The return of the 2000 rupee notes was announced on May 19th. Now, the central bank also promised to review this incremental CRR on or before September 8th. We were actually widely expecting the Reserve Bank could have already announced this decision by now. And even as we speak, we have one eye on the RBI website. Uh, with that, Profess, let me invite uh, my guests, Samaran Chakravarti, the Chief Economist at City India and A. Prasanna, Senior Economist at ICICI Securities PD. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining me. Just a, a little bit of a preview for those who uh, really don't care for this acro uh, uh, acronym, I, uh, CRR. A cash reserve ratio is a bit of a punishment for banks. When you impose a cash reserve ratio on any amount of money or on deposits, what RBI tells the banks is you are raising those deposits at 5% or 6%, but you cannot lend it, that amount of money. You have to keep it as cash with the Reserve Bank. So banks lose. A CRR is a punishment for the banks to that extent. But our, uh, for the macro economy, it may be needed if there is too much money chasing goods and therefore prices are rising. High inflationary situations call for a CRR high. With that, Professor, sorry, uh, Samir uh, and Prasanna, thank you for waiting. Uh, well, uh, Samiran, you believe that Reserve Bank will continue with uh, the ICRR in some form. Uh, yeah, wh why would you say that? Thanks, Lata. I think the way we are looking at it is that uh, the early part of uh, September, we had a liquidity surplus, the banking system, frictional liquidity surplus of about 1.5 lakh crores. And historically, we have seen that at the peak of the deficit, uh, the mm, liquidity drained during the month of September is about two and a half lakh crore. So if we start the year with about one and a half lakh crore at the peak liquidity deficit, it would be about a one lakh crore deficit uh, if RBI does not change the ICR. Now, the question is that for those three, four days of peak liquidity deficit, can RBI manage that through something like the variable repo rate auctions and infuse liquidity? Because our sense is that once this period of liquidity tightness gets over in the middle of the month, then again, by the end of the month, liquidity will be significantly in surplus. We think durable liquidity by end of September would be more than 2 lakh crores. And in an environment where inflation is still a bit of a question mark that how quickly this is going to come down below RBI's comfort level. A uh, slightly tighter leash on liquidity probably seems to be uh, the best path. Having mm. said all this, we understand that there are many ways to skin the cat. You can reduce liquidity in a multiple ways. So it need not be that only ICRR can be used. There are other tools at RBI's disposable, disposal also. But our short story is that RBI might want to keep liquidity a bit tighter and overnight rates a little bit more elevated given the inflationary backdrop that we are in. Okay. Uh, Prasanna, is there an argument uh, for removal or reduction of the ICRR? Uh, I mean, the worst of inflation was 7.44 and we saw veggie, veggie prices uh, declining thereafter. And as Samiran says, you know, there is a withdrawal of cash also during Diwali, during the festival season. So uh, can, can there be good reasons to reduce or remove uh, the incremental CRR? Yeah, so first of all, I think if we link to the, the CRR move to current inflation, I mean, I really, I mean, probably it helps the optics. Maybe RBA can say that they're taking some steps, but frankly, I mean, if it's a food inflation driven spike and then uh, you're doing CRR to withdraw liquidity. How does it help? I don't understand. I think it's pure optics. So maybe uh, we shouldn't kind of focus too much on that. I think in general, what has happened is that I think compared to where we were at the start of the financial year, when RBI decided to pause 
uh, I, I think the monetary and liquidity and the financing conditions have been easier than what both the RBI and the market kind of anticipated at the start of the year. I think one is obviously the 2000 rupee note uh, recall. Other is, I think, even in the first uh, three or even four months of this fiscal year, I think the FX situation was quite benign and therefore RBI uh, did add liquidity or inject liquidity by, by purchase of Forex. And of course, now that situation has changed. So I think there's a lot of unanticipated liquidity buildup, and I see this ICRR as a way to kind of uh, suck that out till a natural liquidity drain takes over. And, and like you said, yes, that drain will happen uh, in the run-up to the festive season, uh, in the run-up to Diwali, basically. So essentially, if you look at uh, quarter three, that's when I think the currency demand, uh, the currency leakage should really pick up and the natural drain should happen. Side by side, it does look like on the FX side also because the dollar is strengthening uh, and, and of course, crude prices have gone up. So obviously, rupee is under pressure. So uh, when RBI kind of intervenes to stem the volatility, there will be some uh, uh, liquidity drain through that that route also. So I, I think the way the RBI will do it or should do it is this ICRR is basically a tool which they can use to calibrate this process. So maybe right now they might want to reduce. 10% seems a bit high because... Uh, we are going into advanced tax, uh, uh, and, and then by October anyway, the cash uh, withdrawal will also start taking place. So maybe they can reduce it to something like a 5%. And, and I think the way to do it is to reassure market. Maybe RBA can say that they will review it every fortnight. Uh, of course, that gives the impression it's a temporary instrument. But to be fair, it has to be a temporary instrument. I don't see this instrument continuing beyond November, for example. I think maybe it can continue through October. And by November, I think the peak currency demand will be in place. A lot of liquidity drain would have happened. So maybe at some point in November, uh, RBA can remove it completely. So in that sense, it's a temporary instrument. So they can say that they will review it every fortnight. And, and then the, the percentage, obviously, they can calibrate as they, as they see fit. Okay, fair enough. So uh, both of you agree that the uh, li uh, banking system liquidity anyway moves into deficit uh, by the end of this calendar. Like, you know, uh, as both of you say, maybe in November itself. So it's a question of managing for uh, what is left of September and October. Now, Samiran, there is uh, uh, another argument that uh, bankers were advancing. RBI would perhaps have liked uh, uh, to remove the liquidity by the VRRR. Uh, for those of you who are, again, uh, an ugly acronym, Variable Rate Reverse Repo. Uh, it's, uh, RBI normally gives it, uh, these days it has been giving it for 15 days. And bankers have not preferred that 15 days because it's uncertainty. You may need the money before 15 days, so you don't put the money there. And therefore, the VRRs have usually flopped. But, uh, uh, Samiran, the argument now is bankers, uh, first of all, the new VRR that has been announced for today is only 50,000 crore. It's not a big ask. It's a slightly smaller ask. And from the banker's side, if you don't apply for this VRR, then I'm going to punish you with a bigger ICRR. So bankers would say, oh, my God, I'm losing more money, ICRR. I might as well give RBI the money in uh, VRRR. Therefore, RBI may announce the decision at maybe 11, 30, 12, when they know the results of uh, that uh, VRRR auction. You think that makes sense? RBI is trying to lead the banks into using the VRRR to drain out liquidity. Otherwise, it has to use a much more punishing instrument. What say? So, Lata, it's difficult for me to speculate on uh, what is the RBI's thought process behind uh, introducing ICRR beyond what they have already mentioned. Uh, but if I just look at the revealed preference or the revealed data, uh, then what it shows is that pre-ICRR, if you look at the ratio of what's the amount that RBI offered in VRRR versus what the bank's participation rate, then that ratio was relatively higher. Uh, after the ICRR introduction, that ratio has actually fallen. Now, for the month of August, the ratio has been mostly in the 30% range, uh, which does not indicate that if the objective was to push banks into participating more in VRRR, that objective has been met. Now, having said that, we have to, this analysis is slightly difficult because the RBI did not reduce the quantum of total VRR, VRRR announcement in August, despite liquidity becoming tighter because of ICRR. Now, today's auction, which is on a lower quantum, 
maybe that will indicate better whether this ratio is changing, whether banks are actually participating more or not. Okay. So the, uh, uh, the market is just shifting its expectation. First it was morning and now the expectation is that it will probably be midday when the uh, results of the uh, auction are known. And if ba uh, the expectation of some of these bankers whom I spoke to is that it will be well bid, that RBI will get the entire 50,000 crore, that will give them the confidence that yes, bankers will respond to uh, the uh, BRRR auctions. They don't have to use a punishing instrument like ICRR. And the next auction could be a five day, could be a seven day BRRR, not 14 days. Uh, but Prasanna, you know, there are other things which is indicating that RBI is looking at other instruments. I am given to understand again from market sources that they have done at least five billion dollars of sell by swaps. Now, that means they have sold dollars now, which means they take out liquidity and that, that uh, swap much was around September 15th, when the market is in deficit and therefore the liquidity comes back. Uh, going by this behavior, the intervention in the FX markets to sell dollars and therefore remove liquidity, do you think it is safe to expect Reserve Bank may remove or reduce ICRR and use FX as an instrument? I think it's, I mean, like Samiran said, I think it's difficult to speculate with all this information. <laughs> the point is, anyway, I think FX intervention, Arbe does it uh, for, or rather to kind of uh, manage the FX market, right? So that is the primary purpose. Obviously, the liquidity impact is a byproduct. So I will be very, very surprised if they are kind of designing or doing their FX intervention with completely a liquidity objective. So, I, I mean, I, I am not sure whether this kind of these things add up. Uh, so, I mm. think different instruments for different objectives, I think probably you should live with that. And and anyway, I think the volatility or, or rather uh, the volatility in global FX markets is quite high right now. So, I would be very surprised if RBI is trying to do this kind of liquidity management through FX because I think they will have their hands full managing FX itself. Oh, oh yes, uh, of course. We are seeing new highs in the dollar index, what, six-month highs. And, uh, and RBI has repeatedly said that they don't mix the two, uh, one instrument for one objective. Uh, and by the way, for the benefit of viewers, and uh, Prasanna, you may not have read this, uh, uh, Saviran's report quotes two very important quotes from the Reserve Bank documents to prove that Reserve Bank always links liquidity with inflation. Uh, one quote is uh, from the uh, uh, RBI's currency and finance report, where they say, if surplus liquidity persists at above 1.5% of NDTL, I think maybe the quote should run so that others can read it. If surplus liquidity persists at or above 1.5 percentage point of NDTL, for every percentage point increase in surplus liquidity, the average inflation could rise by 60 basis points in a year. So Reserve Bank clearly is saying if there is more liquidity, then they have noticed that there is a rise in inflation. There is another quote that uh, was there in the August bulletin, which uh, Samiran points out. Uh, RBI has, uh, uh, okay, I'll just come to that. The slosh of liquidity also has implications for financial stability in the form of potential asset price bubbles and weakening of lending standards, end of quote. So clearly RBI is making that connection. Uh, Samiran, since both of you agree that liquidity is anyway getting into a deficit by uh, November, is it possible that RBI does away with this instrument ICRR and manages with uh, VRRR, FX swaps uh, and other instruments just for the two months and they are going to get some help from advanced taxes? Is that a possibility? I know that Prasanna uh, thinks that uh, inflation has little role to play in this uh, liquidity considerations, but my sense is that this whole 2,000 rupee note linked infusion of additional liquidity into the system was very well known at the time of uh, the announcement in the month of May itself. Uh, but initially, RBI did not announce any tightening of liquidity, uh, most likely because inflation at that time was very benign. Now, yeah. as inflation has crossed some critical thresholds, um, RBI has to be slightly more concerned about where this liquidity is heading. I understand that uh, compared to their earlier studies, that 1.5% of NDTL, the current liquidity is still not higher than that threshold limit. Uh, but still, given how the asset markets are behaving, uh, 
uh, I will not be surprised if RBI, for the time being, till inflation numbers come back into uh, more uh, comfortable range for RBI, uh, keeps liquidity slightly on the tighter side. I think that will be a prudent policy. Uh, there are still enough uncertainties on the inflation with bad uh, yeah. rainfall in August and early September. Uh, yeah. So why take a chance and ease liquidity now and then later on find that that can turn out mm. to be more inflation? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, I mean, uh, on August, uh, on May 19th, when the 2000 rupee note policy was announced, at that time, inflation was not expected anywhere at 7.4. You know, the RBI's average was, I think, 6% or even 58 for the second quarter. Only then they increased it to 6.2. So uh, they were not aware that uh, tomatoes and El Nino can, uh, you know, create such a big problem. Uh, just a final word from all of you. There is a deliberate reason why I have invited the two of you. I want you to state on the record, what is your best guess? What will RBI do? Samirat, I think yours is there in black and white. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the ICR will continue in some shape and form. Uh, okay. Maybe 10% will get reduced a bit. Uh, but uh, I'll be it's slightly continue. surprised if uh, I, it is completely removed in after just Prasanna? one month. Prasanna? Yeah, um, I think they'll reduce it to 5%. Okay. And I'm going with they will remove it. <laughs> Let's see. We should know perhaps in an hour, perhaps in two hours, perhaps uh, in four hours. But uh, we will know what RBI is going to do. Wrap up on Bazaar on that note. Chartbusters up next.